They were playing at the same time, in fact. At the same all of them time played well. at exactly the same time. So a lot of pressure on all of the players, none of them knowing what the results from the other matches were going to be as they were playing. So everyone on both sides playing with as much as they could. Uh, every win could count from either side there. And starting off, we are going to see Sam Bentham, who is going to be taking on uh, Leonardo Bononomi. So Sam, a very accomplished player. We see a lot of recent achievements. Uh, the Utrecht special event, he got top 16 there. Top 16 at Liverpool as well this year in 2023, as well as a top eight in Lille last year and a top eight in Jönköping uh, in 2019. So a lot of very, very strong results from Sam consistently placing up in the higher ranks at regionals. Yep, and the team he's bringing, it's quite interesting as well. We have Goldigo, Ferrigraf, Amungus, Urshifu, Pelipper, and Iron Hands. A bit more of a rain-sided team there, as we have a Goldigo this time around, not with a leftover set, but rather with a metal coat set, trying to make sure that this Make It Rain will do just a bit more of that solid damage that Make It Rain has done time and time again. And Pelipper one of the, being one of those Pokemon that we haven't seen all that much recently, but still proving to be quite a capable Pokemon with its weather setting ability, Tailwind, and even ha having the support move White Guard for poss possibility to block any uh, spread moves. Yeah, Pelipper, we saw a couple of rain teams doing well at recent US regionals. Uh, we saw Justin Tang, for example, got top eight with a team with Pelipper and a Scarf Salamence with Hurricane, uh, like you said. A lot of interesting support options on the Pelipper. It's stat block, maybe letting it down a little bit, but if you can get it in the right position, it's got powerful moves in Hurricane and Weather Ball. It's got Tailwind, Wide Guard, very nice into maybe opposing Tornadus, who would normally appreciate the rain being up for those 100% accuracy Bleak Wind Storms, but the Wide Guard able to stop that. And on top of that, the rain is going to boost the Surging Strikes damage from this Choice Scarf Urshifu, as well as providing some protection from fire moves that normally Golden Go and Amoongus wouldn't like to take very much. Now, with the rain up, they don't mind them quite as much. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Furigraph also providing a nice option there with the Trick Room there, as a Pelipper might not be the fastest Pokemon to put up Tailwind. If you have put up your Tailwind, it is a nice thing to use. But with the Furigraph, you have that complete other option as well. Going to the other side of the speed bracket, and you have like a nice thing like Iron Hands as well. Let's take a look at what Leonardo Bonami is bringing. Uh, as the, you can see in 21, the Global Exhibition Champion, 2017, the Leon uh, Special Event Champion. He's cut Worlds two times as well and has been a Players' Cup finalist two times in a row as well. Yeah, so again, a player with a lot of, a lot of placements very high up in these kind of top level events, in special events, which is kind of the same level as a regional. We've got a lot of world's top cuts. Players' Cup finalists, another very accomplished player. And again, uh, a slightly different take on a team archetype that we've seen a few times before here with this Bramble Gas Tornadus Urshifu core. Yeah, we see Golden Go, Bramagos, Rillaboom, Urshifu, Tornadus, and Landorus. But this Landorus is not just a regular Landorus. It is Banderus. It is carrying that choice band, which has been a nice combination that we have seen a few times together with Tornadus. Just making sure that you are able to hit with a strong earthquake boosted by that choice band next to Tornadus, doing as much damage as possible. And speaking of damage, it's the Urshifu as well, carrying that live orb, no, no mystic water on this Urshifu. This is going for that extra damage on everything. Close combat will hurt even more. On top of that, we've also got the choice specs on the Golden Go as well. So this team very much built around doing a lot of damage and doing it quickly. Interestingly as well, the Terra types on a couple of these Pokemon, Landorus with that water Terra type, often we'll see on offensive variants, the flying type that's been the most common recently on the Choice Scarf sets. But here with the Choice Band, opting instead to go for a more defensive Terra type without that speed to allow it to move first all the time, going for that water terrestrialization, letting it face up against Urshifu slightly better. And similarly, Urshifu with that Life Orb item, it's going to be taking a little bit of recoil but it's doing a bit more damage. So maybe you go for a defensive terrestrialization like that poison typing here, which lets it resist fairy moves from a Fluttermane, for example, which otherwise wouldn't really want to face down. Yep, exactly. So let's take a look what these players will do. Uh, things like 
it will be quite an interesting match because you still i actually don't know does hurricane still work on bramble gas because i know a lot of uh flying type like a lot of moves don't work thanks to wind rider but i'm actually not remembering uh, if hurricane actually works on it uh, i'm pretty sure hurricane is a win move it makes sense that hurricane it would, would make be a sense win move. <laughs> <laughs> it's Absolutely. kind of a key part of hurricanes generally yeah um, so i believe that is still blocked by that bramble dust but feel free so i'm sure someone in the twitch chat will correct me if i'm incorrect <laughs> <laughs> as we do have the game here gold to go tornadoes versus for Wigraf, iron hands this gives uh quite a few options here as we have tailwind from leonardo's side possibility from leonardo's side while on sam's side you have that possibility to go, just go for a trick room as well Iron Hands providing some fake out support, possibly for this Tornadus here. Uh, unfortunately, this Tornadus is the Rocky Helmet uh, item, so it will hurt itself. And I suppose if it went for that, but we have the switch out from Tornadus, just opting, just not wanting risk it, uh, risking it. And the Landerous Banders is in, uh, making sure that the attack stat from this Iron Hands will drop just a bit more as the fake out coming out into this Landerous. Yeah, the Landerous coming in here thinking, okay. Maybe you don't really want Tailwind up here with the threat of Trick Room from this Rigorath. Instead, switching out to Landorus, weakening the damage from Iron Hands with that Intimidate ability, and now threatening super effective ground type moves into the Iron Hands. And even though it's not super effective on the Rigorath, a lot of damage maybe with a Stomping Tantrum or an Earthquake into that one. Or the other option here is just a U turn. Maybe try and get another Intimidate drop on this Iron Hands later in the game, get some damage down on the Rigorath or just react to whatever is going to be forced to switch in here. This Frigorath now with the Choice Specs item, thanks to that Golden Ghost trick, is locked into Trick Room, and is forced to switch out here, I think. So, can Leonardo capitalize on that forced switch out is going to be the question in this situation. Yeah, it's a weird position now. You have your Trick Room up, but unfortunately you are locked inside that move as well. So, uh, having to switch out, not really the greatest way like Leonardo can kind of capitalize on this as the Amoongus is coming in instead of this Ferrigraph. So uh, with the Iron Hands going for a wild charge into that goal, we're doing quite a bit of damage even though intimidated, but with the newly uh, achieved uh, Rocky Howard as well doing a bit more to this Iron Hands as the U-turn into Amoongus uh, also doing quite some damage there. It's just showcasing the Banderas. Uh, power as now Leonardo is able to switch something else yet in again making sure that this Landorus has potential to switch in again and then again onto this Iron Hands as well. But the U-turn there is good as well because as we said the switch on the Frigograph is forced and now Amoongus coming in can't use Spore into Golden Go thanks to its good as gold ability preventing any status moves from hitting it. So if Leonardo has for example a Rillaboom in the back or Bramble Ghast a grass type that is immune to that Spore like we see here this Amoongus is now put, not putting on any pressure, and Iron Hands again, not really doing any damage into this Bramble Ghast, especially with Intimidate, as we see a Shadow Ball coming out from this Golden Go, reading again that that Frograph is going to switch out, not caring that there was a normal type in that slot, instead just opting for some Shadow Ball damage into this Amoongus that's just switched in, which eats its Citrus Berry, gets a little bit of health back, but now again, that position for Amoongus, not fantastic, it's not really putting on the pressure that you'd want it to under this trick room. Yeah, exactly. You have your trick room up. You have the potential to do a lot of things here. But now Leonardo really playing quite well with this, as you said, like bringing in the two Pokemon that can be sport here, where you would be absolutely terrified when it would be in. But now Sam is a bit on the back foot, having to switch out uh, like his Ferrigraph in the earlier turn. And now his Amoongus not really knowing what to do as the switching from the Iron Hands into the Ferrigraph as the uh, Bramagals is protecting there at the follow buff into that Bramagals, trying to make sure that the sash is at least broken as Golo -Go just goes for another Shadow Ball into this Amoongus doing quite a bit of damage uh, to make sure that the next one will be enough to kill this. Like you said, that Bramble Ghost going for tech, uh, just allows it to keep its Focus Sash item intact, meaning that it will need two attacks at least to take it down. And now Sam's repositioned into this Ferrigraph, which does have that Choice Specs item again, so it is going to be doing quite a bit of damage here, thanks to the Trick from earlier, but it does mean it can't really set Trick from up again. And so Sam's in a tough position now where he has to make the most of these Trick from turns, or else he's going to lose speed control for the rest of the game. And Leonardo's doing a very, very good job of just keeping this Trick from in check, not allowing his Pokemon to take that much damage. Tornadus comes in, takes that Specs Psychic, 
relatively well. Another Shadow Ball coming out from the Golden Go. Yet more chip damage down on Sam's Pokemon. Not big chunks of damage coming down here from Leonardo, but he's getting chip on a lot of Sam's Pokemon. And like we said, he is stalling out these Trick Room turns, which is the most important thing at this point in the game. Yes, exactly. And switching in, uh, like pr trying to predict uh, Pokemon switching in into one of these Pokemon that could either be not could not be Sport is quite a difficult thing to do. So Leonardo also trying to see uh, this as the opportune moment to switch in its own tornado, trying to make sure that it is able to protect once more to gen then really start to capitalize off its potentially own Tailwind or even just try and do. As much damage with any sort of bleak wind storm as the iron hands coming in right now not really having a good fake out uh target as it is just switching out yet again into that among us right now trying to see if uh what the potential here could be from leonardo leonardo switching out his gold goal seeing it has done quite enough and the landerus is in right now as well landerus and tornadoes onto the field while trick room might be ending very soon does seem quite powerful as the Tornadoes is going for the Protect here, making sure that it can stay onto the field for one more turn. Furigraph going for that Spec Psychic, but unfortunately into the Protect of this uh, Tornadoes. Meaning now Trick Room is over, Tornadoes and Landers are on the field, and Amoongus is already quite a bit chipped, and Furigraph is quite afraid of this, uh, whatever this Landers is going to be throwing out. Yeah, now Amoongus again... Leonardo did a very good job of neutralizing this Amoongus. Previously, it was stopping the Spore from going off under Trick Room. Outside of Trick Room, Amoongus is often used as a Pokemon with redirection with that Rage Powder move, drawing all attacks towards it. But now Tornadoes and Landorus both threatening big spread moves with the Bleak Wind Storm and the Earthquake. Amoongus not going to be able to protect its partner, Furigarath, from those moves. And Furigarath, with its Choice Specs item locked onto it, is not going to be able to protect itself either. So this is a tricky position, I think for Sam to try and get around this offensive pressure from Leonardo now that Trick Room's down. And we are going to see a Terrastalization coming out on this Amoongus from Sam's side. Yeah, we have the Terra Water trying to make sure that any potential Bleak Wind Storms could even be, uh, are no longer super effectively hit. This Amoongus being able to survive for potentially one more turn could provide effective as the Tailwind is coming out from this Tornadoes. Lander is just going for the U-turn into this Ferragraph, not even going for any other sort of strong moves because you don't really if you have that advantage state right now you can try and keep up this momentum going goal to go switching in on a potential spore from this among us trying to bait out any sort of switch uh any sort of psychics as well going into this goal to go not very effective despite doing quite a bit of damage Paul and puff also into this goal to go and goal to go still hanging on as well i like that play from sam there reading that probably the lander is going to switch out there scared of the spore you can't guarantee the one-shot on the Amoongus here, or you can't guarantee that you're going to KO the Amoongus this turn, thanks to the Terrastalization, and you don't want to get put to sleep. So instead, in opting to use that Banded U-turn to pivot into Golden Go, who is not really scared of the Psychic that Frigograph is throwing out here, can't be spored, isn't worried about a Pollen Puff from Amoongus, so that's not doing any damage. But Sam may be thinking, okay, if I can get this correct, if maybe Leonardo doesn't make the play where he brings Golden Go in and instead goes into the Bramble Gasp, maybe that Choice Spec Psychic and the Pollen Puff is enough to get the KO there. So Sam may be angling for Leonardo making a slightly different play there, and I think that's a perfectly good read to go for. In a position like this, in Sam's position, you've got to try and make some more aggressive plays, maybe hope that your opponent falls into a trap rather than hoping that you can just outplay this position because this is a very very strong position now for leonardo with the tailwind up with golden go in position the double switch from sam meaning no offensive pressure this turn leonardo free to throw off two big attacks here this iron hands not looking very healthy golden go on leonardo's side immune to that fake out is safe to throw off another shadow ball into the iron hands or into the golden go if it wants to, to try and pick up another big chunk of damage or a ko on one of Sam's Pokemon at last. Yeah, this is uh, Sam is really fighting right now because, as you said, have you have to make some plays here because uh, both Golugo and Tony is being in the tailwind here. Golugo just being able to shadow ball into uh, Sam's Golugo as well, trying to hit that for super effective damage. We have seen Bleak and Storm do quite a bit of damage, but not probably not enough for this Iron Hands just yet. So. Leonardo has to try and pivot around here, thinking what will Sam do in this situation as Sam is protecting his own Golugo, trying to make sure to 
that it can stay on the field for one turn longer as the Shadow Ball going into that goal will go will not be affected here. Bleak Wind Storm coming out from Tornadoes into the, again into that golden goal. Let's see if it hits the Iron Hands. It does, and it, does and it pick is able to KO. That maybe Assault Vest on Iron Hands could have maybe saved it from that Bleak Wind Storm there, but it ends up being enough to knock out the Iron Hands. And that is the first Pokemon that has been knocked out so far in this game. We've seen a lot of positioning, we've seen a lot of chip damage, especially from Leonardo's side here. And now finally, one of those Pokemon has been knocked out, which suddenly reduces how much Sam can pivot. Uh, so he's going to struggle now, I think, to reposition. But we see the Golden Go and the Tornadoes on Leonardo's side, both quite low on HP here. So maybe if Sam can pick up a good KO in this position, we do have the Rage Powder now from Amoongus to take a Shadow Ball away from this Golden Go. We don't see it up for the Rage Powder. Shadow Ball coming out from Leonardo's Golden Go. And Sam's Ooh. Golden Go survives on 8 HP. Goes for the Make It Raid. Uh, Tornadus protects against that, not wanting to take a double KO this turn. Wanting to set up another Tailwind later in the game. But the Golden Go on Leonardo's side does go down. And that's one of those two Spore Immunities gone. Yeah, that was a well done by Sam, even Palm puffing his Golden Go as well, making sure that his Golden Go gets uh, quite a bit of HP back at it again. We still have the Bramagas and Tornadus in the back, but this was a nice way to try and position and uh, like remove the Golden Go as well, because your Amoongus is still threatening quite a lot with a potential Spore here. Uh, you're not threatening Bramagas itself, but you could, put, uh, for example, still go for uh, a pollen puff onto it, trying to make uh, sure that its sash is gone. On the other hand, the issue is Bramagas is not only a ghost type, it is also a grass type. Uh, now being able to hit this Amoongus for super effective damage, but we have seen Amoongus survive so many super effective moves already, so it is quite possible that it is able to survive one more. As Bramagas is threatening a lot here because it's got like you said the threat of the power on the amoongus it can also go for that uh poltergeist into the golden go to knock that out but it does have to be worried about a photograph switching into a ghost type move here it does need to be a little bit worried oh we see a rage powder coming out from sam there maybe trying to catch a terrestrialization from the bramble ghost but otherwise i don't understand what that's for because that rage powder cannot redirect an attack from a grass type and we see the tailwind go up the wind rider ability activates on the bramble ghast giving it that plus one boost to its attack and that power whip with its high base power is more than enough to take out the amoongus on sam's side and we do get another knockout from sam here taking down that tornadoes on leonardo's side so it is a 2v2 but this ferrograph is very low it's locked into a move now because of that choice specs on it and we see Landorus coming in, threatening a big Earthquake, which will, at this range, I think, take the KO on both of Sam's Pokémon. Yeah, with the last minute uh, Tailwind, last turn Tailwind here from the Tornadoes, just uh, making sure that both of these Pokémon are able to attack faster than both the Golgo and the Ferrigarav as well. Uh, and Landorus finally uh, no longer needing to go for any sort of U-turn place and trying to position yourself. It is that time to deliver what you always wanted. It is time for a lot of damage on both of these Pokemon. And as you said, Earthquake could very well put, uh, kill both of these Pokemon as we do have that Terra Activation as well. Uh, just to make sure in case of a Make a Vein, you are able to resist that as well. Uh, you know. It's so nice, water type is good defensive, and if you haven't used Terra, sometimes you just gotta show it off. It's just a nice hat at the end of the day. <laughs> Landorus wants to feel a little bit stylish as it takes these last KOs. We see the Poltergeist come out from Bramblegast, protected by Golden Go. Are we gonna see the Earthquake from this Landorus? We see the Stomping Tantrum actually, opting to not go for the Earthquake, but with the Water Trastalization, the Landorus, even if Poltergeist misses Golden Go, not too worried about a potential make it rain there. I think the other option that Leonardo had was just to knock out his own Bramble Ghost with an Earthquake, because Earthquake is going to be able to take out both of the Pokemon on Sam's side there. So uh, let's see what Sam will adapt it against Leonardo's team right now. Be interesting to see if Sam brings the rain mode to this team. We saw the Amoongus not really making much of an impact into the Golden Go, into that grass type Bramble Ghost. Big threats from the Tornadus 
with that Bleak Wind Storm, but we just see the Iron Hands Choreograph lead again, and this time Leonardo changing it up, bringing that Landorus in the lead slot. Yeah, uh, so Sam opting to just not switch his uh, play there, which is also quite valid here because Leonardo might have been expecting that. Sam might have gone for another mode, as you said, like with the Ray mode, for example. But now, nah, with that Landorus being Terra Water, Sam might, re uh, might be thinking, hmm, maybe it's not really the best of options here. Um, because, yeah, you still had Antonio, you had, can go for that Terra Water on the Landorus. Landorus then threatening a lot of return damage there in that regard. But right now, you are able to uh, potentially fake out anything, but no fake outs coming out. Bleak Windstorm into the Ferrograph, lowering its speed. Uh, it's not really mining it that hard. As a U-turn into Ferrograph, barely missing out six the kill. HP. What? That's going to be big here. That's going to allow Sam to potentially set up a trick room here. And I think we saw him lock in that wild charge into Tornadus. This time around, Sam saying, look, you got the better of me with the speed control in that first game. You allowed, uh, sorry, you stopped me from getting trick room up again, but I'm going to try and prevent you from setting up a tailwind late game here. I'm just going to go for big damage into that Tornadus. Not enough to pick up the KO thanks to the Intimidate from Landorus, but puts it in range of probably any other attack from these two relatively strong Pokemon on Sam's side. But we see the aftermath of the Bleakman Storm and the Wild Charge Recall and the Rocky Helmet on the Iron Hands. And now Iron Hands is at just about half of its HP. Yeah, so now you really have to think of what kind of position you want to be in. Uh, go to go, of course, this time around, not having not tricked yet, has the potential to just go for that massive damage with uh, Shadow Ball or even a Nikki Rain possibly there, uh, deciding here really what to do. You even have Thunderbolt as an option there, uh, but that depends, of course, on the Pokemon that Sam has in the back here, but Golugan just being able to be one of those Pokemon that is able to just click Shadow Ball quite strongly as the Paragraph is just going for a helping hand this time around, making sure that this, K uh, this uh, Iron Hands will be able to potentially kill something here, uh, mainly the Tornadoes, but the Tornadoes wisely is choosing for the Protect. Wild Charge into that Golugo, doing over half onto that Golugo. Quite a bit of good damage there as the Shadow Ball, Spec Shadow Ball into the Iron Hands will not be enough to kill it either way. So Sam's Pokemon will living on a threat right now, but they are still in the advantage state because of that Trick Room. It's a tough call here though for Sam because the biggest damage he has on his side of the field at the moment is this Iron Hands, which has taken an Intimidate from the Landorus already. And it can't safely go for another Wild Charge here because there is a threat of that Landorus switching back in on that Golden Ghost slot to just eat that electric type attack. And if he goes for a Wild Charge into the Tornadoes here, the Rocky Helmet recoil and the Wild Charge recoil will probably be enough to take this Iron Hands out. So even though the Trick Room is up for Sam at the moment, it's still not the best position for him and he can't safely switch because of the huge offensive pressure being put on by this Tornadus and this Choice Specs Golden Go. It's going to be very difficult for Sam to maybe get a free switch into something he has in the back end to get rid of the Intimidate on this Iron Hands. And instead, we see no switches. We see the Terra Steel coming out from this Tornadus. Dazzling Gleam doing not very much damage into the two Steel types. On Leonardo's side, Wild Charge though will be enough to pick up this Golden Go. I imagine we're going to see a Bleakwind Storm here coming out from the Tornadus. Does it connect on the Iron Hands is going to be the big one. It does oh. miss. It misses into the Frigograph. It hits the Iron Hands. Iron Hands is going to go down now. And that is a big threat on Sam's side to this Tornadus that is now removed from the field. Yeah, Iron Hands really proving that it is one of the best Pokemon uh, around. And it has provided a lot of uh, options right now for Sam as being able to do that much damage to the Tornadoes, even able to kill in the goal to go, which was quite an issue for Sam in the previous game, but now well adapted in that regard. Uh, the Bleak Windstorm missing to Rigograph could be quite nice here because he give that potential to go for another helping hand or even another attack with this Rigograph as well. Sam now switching in its own Pelipper as the Bramble Ghast is also being switched in. Uh, one of, as we have learned, Hurricane is uh, made of wind, so uh, that will not be able to kill this Bramogast, unfortunately. Uh, but Bramogast not really having that many options, right? Going for Shadow Sneak is not an option for it, as long as this Ferrigraph is onto the field. I think this Bramogast is going to become a real problem here for Sam. We see the Pelipper, and I believe we've seen the Urshifu in the back. 
Leonardo probably is going to be able to assume that Urshfu's in the back as well if the Pelipper's here, which means this Bramblegast, it's not really taking any big damage from any of these Pokemon unless Urshfu wants to use its Choice Scarf item to lock itself into Ice Spinner, which is very effective into the Landorus that we've seen in the back here, but it does not do very much damage at all to this Terra Steel Tornadus, which we see go for another Protect, just stalling out this last turn of Trick Room. Bramblegast, relatively safe here, it's also going for another Protect. And now this Frigograph again is on such low health that it's going to be almost impossible for Sam to get another Trick Room up if he wants it, unless this Bramblegast misses an attack onto the Frigograph. Yep. Sam seeing the option here to go for that tailwind, early tailwind here with his Pelipper during the last turn of Trick Room, trying to make sure that uh, that he does have that potential to go for uh, that Trick Room. So you have that speed as well. Even if Leonardo is going for that tailwind as well, he still has the Urshvu in the back with that Choice Scarf, trying to provide a lot of damage. But seeing this tornado is this slow, I don't think that uh, Ice Spinner is that bad of a move as we have the Weigar coming out from this uh, Pelipper right now, trying to make sure that its Farigaraf is protected by any sort of Bleak Windstorms. We have the Saki doing massive amount of damage. Tornadoes, Bleak Windstorm, not going to be able to hit either this Pelipper or this Farigaraf, meaning only this Bramagas is on the field being able to do any sort of damage right now. Losing its Sash already, Poltergeist coming out. It did uh, activate as it is hitting the pellet with its own focus ash doing quite a bit of damage as the, the twisted dimensions return to normal so that was a loss for trick room excuse me yeah that was uh i miscounted there as well don't worry uh and it, a good play from sam there calling the bleak wind storm and going for the wide guard interesting though we see that this forigraph even with tailwind up is still slower than this bramble ghast moving before it in trick room even though that Tailwind is up on Sam's side, which means the Bramblegast is going to be moving first now. And Tornadus doesn't necessarily need to go for a Tailwind in this situation, which means that there's potentially a risk for Pelipper going for this Wide Guard. So maybe a play Sam could make here is to double down on the Bramblegast with two... Oh, apologies. The Frigograph had taken a speed drop from a previous oh, Bleak Storm. That's yes. why it was slower. But we do see the Wide Guard come out here from Pelipper trying to stop a potential bleak wind storm but we do instead just see the tailwind come out here so no value from that wide guard bramble gast getting that wind rider boost and if it picks the right target and hits which it does it's going to take out that forigraph and bramble gast stays on the field for another turn which again just means that this urshifu in the back is under so much pressure yeah, this Urshfu has to do quite a bit of damage to really try and carry the team here. Now, Sam still has the option for its Terra as well, if I recall correctly. So you are able to get rid of that flying type weakness uh, on it, at least, where you are able to now just go for an Ice Spinner onto the Bramagas. Well, the Bramagas being this low, not really needing an Ice Spinner, so to say as the Tornadoes uh, still has put up the Tailwind and there's only one more turn of Tailwind that this Pelipper has been able to provide here right now as well. So this Urshfu has to do, uh, has to take a lot of these KOs but it, and it has to do it right now as well. Yeah, Urshfu not in a great position but at the same time with Tailwind up on both sides there is the speed advantage for this Choice Scarf Urshfu. It will be able to pick up a KO on this Bramblegast slot, no matter what Leonardo does in this situation, thanks to the Choice Scarf and the Tailwind. But there is also the option maybe for Leonardo to go for a Shadow Sneak into the Pelipper. Pelipper not running the Protect. So Pelipper will be able to Wide Guard just this one more turn if this happens. But if the Shadow Sneak comes out into the Pelipper, there's no more Wide Guard protecting this Urshfu from these big bleak wind storms that we're going to see. And it is the Shadow Sneak coming out into the Pelipper. Pelipper goes down that Wind Rider plus one attack boost on the Bramble Ghast, making a lot of difference here. We're going to see a Surging Strikes come out, which is going to take out the Bramble Ghast in this situation. Uh, only one hit needed with the Terra Water and the Rain Up. That resistance doesn't really matter. But now it's Urshfu facing down two Pokemon on Leonardo's side both of which are doing very, very big damage here. Bleak and Storm is going to get blocked by this Wide Guard, but there is no more Wide Guard protecting this Urshifu. In the rain, these are going to be 100% accurate, these Bleak and Storms, so you can't even rely on a miss, potentially. And we see this Landorus coming in. Intimidate, not going to do anything with this Urshifu locked into Choice Scarf, but with Tailwind up on Leonardo's side and this Landorus coming into the field here, 
it feels like this is going to be very, very difficult for Sam to come back from. Yeah, this uh, it's not looking too great. The rain being up also means that Bleak when Storm has no chance to miss anymore as well. So uh, the Urshifu has to do quite a bit of damage here to uh, really uh, showcase that what it can do here. Uh, if it is, has the potential to be faster than the Landorus in Tailwind, could be nice here as the Bleak Windstorm hitting into that Urshifu, as does the Earthquake, making sure that this Urshifu does go down as well. Uh, Kyung is teammate Tornadoes at the same time, but getting the W anyway. Yeah, interestingly, I would have gone for Earthquake in the end game if I were Leonardo in the last game, and I would have gone for Stomping Tantrum this time around, but he says, it doesn't matter, I win either way in both situations. Again, very good management of the speed control by Leonardo in that game, making sure he had that extra turn of Tailwind at the end of the game that he needed to keep that Landorus faster. 